Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Grid sponsored by Gaper.io. Today we have Faisal Khan. Faisal is a product manager at Visible Alpha and he comes with an ex extensive experience of working in the fintech AI. Faisal, welcome to the show. Hey Mustafa, thanks for having me. So give us a brief background about yourself, what you've been up to before Visible Alpha. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I started my career in uh, management consulting. So I worked at, at Booz, uh, Strategy N, uh, which is now part of PwC, uh, and did that for a few years. Um, had a lot of clients in the financial services industry, actually. Um, and always had a passion for finance. So it was very interesting. Learned a lot about how big <laughs> an industry it was. Yeah. Um, but uh, also wanted to do something more impactful. Uh, and uh, making slides until two in the morning every day. Uh, so after my MBA, I, I was really keen on, on working in startups. So for the last four years, uh, I've been at a couple different tech startups, uh, three of them at Consensus, which was uh, the biggest blockchain company in the world uh, for a long time. Uh, and we were working on a lot of use cases, uh, trying to implement blockchain in enterprises, in retail, um, you know, payment use cases, crowdfunding use cases, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then found my way to where I'm now, Visible Alpha, uh, working on products, especially our products around uh, kind of investment analysis. So trying to understand uh, the fundamentals behind a company. Is it growing? Is it kind of increasing its profitability? Uh, we're backed by Goldman Sachs, so we have a lot of access um to yeah. very useful data uh and so it's a lot of fun uh it's really interesting when i started my career like you know a little more than 10 years ago fintech really meant like lending uh and crowdfunding and things like that uh, but nowadays uh there's a lot of apps in the investing space you know you take the train and people are checking robin hood so it's really cool to see that kind of growth and expansion nice and just making it much more relevant towards uh, the, the conversation towards COVID, right? So mm -hmm. banks and uh, the insurance and other institutions, they've kind of been reluctant or that's the perception in here. They've kind of been reluctant when it comes down to uh, working remotely and those kind of stuff. And even exposing their APIs, you know, if yeah. you look five years, you know, getting access to an API required your one having a law degree yourself, you know, to go through all the <laughs> So do you think the mindset has evolved just because of COVID or has it been evolving prior to that? And how do you then will go towards blockchain? Uh, I mean, so my experience with banks uh, and honestly, uh, large, very large corporations in general, but banks is especially because they're so heavily regulated. Uh, they, they don't change unless they have to. <laughs> and so uh, I think the pandemic has been a great example for that. Um, what was funny enough, when I was at Consensus, uh, we were a remote first company. So uh, maybe a little ahead of the curve there. And, and we were, you know, it takes a little getting used to, but we found incredibly productive. And a big part of it was just, uh, the difficulty in finding engineering talent that knew about blockchain and understood what it was. And so we really had to go, we literally had engineers in the, in the jungles of Nicaragua because we had to go anywhere we could find <laughs> people who had these skill sets. Um, you know, trying to hire a thousand engineers was hard enough. And if you want to hire a thousand who knew about blockchain, it was, it was really challenging. Um, so I think it's great that, you know, in general, people are more opening up to remote work. Uh, I think the banks, uh, yeah, like I'm saying, they're being forced to now, and I imagine it'll still be pretty slow. Uh, there's still so much, a lot of concern about information leakage or, you know, uh, gathering, uh, like making sure people are compliant with all the rules and things like that. Um, but we're definitely not going to go back to, to where we were. And it's funny because um, on one hand, yeah, they're very averse to, uh, what was it, to having remote workers. At the same time, most banks have massive teams in India. 
Yeah. And so <laughs> they've been doing remote work for a long time, uh, but for some reason it was just compartmentalized. It was kind of small. Uh, but do you think, in your opinion, uh, uh, in regards to with the adaptability towards remote work, the use cases for the blockchain are going to increase significantly then? Uh, the blockchain, so the reason I left uh, the blockchain space was partly related to what I was saying. So much of finance is so heavily regulated. Yeah. Uh, if you want to raise funds, you know, you have to comply. You Either everyone has to be accredited, which means they have over a million dollars in assets, or you have to register with the SEC, which can take you know, very long time. And so to me, it was very clear this was not like a one or two year story. It was like a five or 10 year story. Um, so we'll see how that happens, but uh, it is interesting uh, watching the space evolve. Uh, I would compare it to kind of like dial up <laughs> internet in the nineties. Like it took a long time to for the internet to kind of be fully fleshed out, but once it was, it really, it really did it too much. God. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. So, uh, in regards to, and how do you see the fintech space, the one? So, can you tell us a bit more about the current work that you're doing? Then we'll turn the conversation to more. Sorry, I couldn't hear the last word. What about the fintech space? So, can you uh, uh, tell us a bit about uh, what you're doing at Alpha right now? So, what is the product doing and how is it evolving? Right. So, we basically process uh data from investment brokers so uh goldman sachs um bank of america all the large uh, investment brokers they put out a lot of investment research um on every company that you've heard of and a lot that you haven't heard of uh so what we do is we take all of the their research we pull in all the numbers and we basically essentially turn it into a database uh, and then provide that access to investors. So uh, it's really useful for them because we're, whereas from Bloomberg and Factset, which are, you can call them almost like the original fintechs because they were really the first financial technology, what you can get is kind of the standard information like uh, revenue, uh, net income, the stuff that the SEC requires that every company disclose, but we can get to much more granular level of detail uh, you know, whether that's how many cars might come off the lot at uh, Tesla next year, or um, you know, how many iPhones does the Wall Street thing Apple's gonna sell? So it's pretty pretty detailed information, and it's hugely useful to a uh, huge number of people. All right. So you know, I was going through your profile, and it said you know I really like the punchline. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a sci-fi model. <laughs> Now, now I work on strategy for tech companies. I guess it's the closest I could get. Yeah. Why limit yourself, Faisal? It just. I mean, yeah, maybe I'll go back to sci-fi. But I think what I, what Visible Alpha, the closest it gets uh, is because I'm working on. Uh, it's a data product, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, more SaaS products that are oriented towards data, and then you mentioned APIs and, and making that data accessible to other platforms. And um, so, I, what I really enjoy about my work is getting to work on kind of advanced data problems, whether it's like machine learning or data science uh, related stuff. That's that's the part where it starts to feel like sci-fi, mm -hmm. but it's still a little, uh, it's a little bit short. Yeah, I'm really for that. <laughs> so. Um, in the last couple of years, you know, we've seen multiple banks or corporate cards sprung up, right? And in, in the end of Q4, everyone was actually coming up with their own corporate card, you know, and becoming FinTech, FinTech, because yeah. whatever you look at, you know, whether they were into expense reporting or whether they were into bookkeeping, and everyone was just coming up with the lending corporate cards, the lending corporate cards, right? So I just started, started having these discussions with a few friends of mine. How far are we? So get the thought out, then I just want your opinion on it. So maybe we're reaching a point that, you know, because based on the data, every generation is becoming much more poor every year, right? So <laughs> generationally, because the boomers had more money, the, the probability of owning a house, car is probably yeah. The world is transitioning towards a universal basic income is what's 
Sam are talking about, right? So, but our digital identities are becoming more and more valuable, I believe, day by day because of the fake news and everything coming up. Yeah, authentication. So do you think maybe in the next two, three years forward, you know, there'll be a fintech startup that will be putting a value on Faisal Khan's or Mustafa's LinkedIn profile and Facebook and Twitter <laughs> and be like, you surrender as an arbitrage, you surrender all your login IDs to us. And against that, you can get a loan. And because I believe we're already at a point, if you don't pay the down payment on your Tesla, the next day car can go back to the showroom you know <laughs> like automated <laughs> so, drive itself back to the dealership <laughs> so we're already there yet the car just because of down payment not the car can go so do you think the world will turn can the world transition towards that uh that's a good question um yeah we're putting you on the spotlight recording <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're asking me about sci-fi uh scenarios i I'm sure someone will try, um, but ultimately what I've found is that people are kind of lazy <laughs> <laughs> and they're just going to, they're going to adopt the technology that's the easiest for them to use. Uh, if there's a way, you know, even if there's a way to make money off your profile or your information, uh, you'd be surprised. I, I would bet people would be kind of too lazy to go about it and they're, much more likely to go keep going for free products like Facebook and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, it's a maybe. So it's neither a yes or a no. It's a maybe answer. We'll see. I mean, I'm very cynical uh, about the future of digital identity because uh, a lot of it hinges on the legal ramifications and privacy laws. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ever watch a U.S. Senate hearing, you know, these are people who aren't, who can barely use an iPhone. So I don't have a lot of faith <laughs> in their ability to write, uh, write regulation that makes sense or can fit all the possibilities that software can do today. And just as a moonshot, what would be in the fintech space, do you think, what would be the next moonshot project? Or a disruptor, a real disruptor, not just because they're into finance and they build some tech around it, just like moonshot. What, what's wrong? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think there are there are a lot of different apps that you can use, uh, whether it's the app for you know your Bank of America. Uh, there's Mint, which is like a great personal finance app. There's Robinhood. Uh, for you know investing but there's no like one-stop shop uh, that can like manage your financial life you know I would love an app that tells me that just looks at you know my incoming salary and how much where I live and just tells me you should be saving this much every month <laughs> and basically did it for me uh, and maybe that is how uh, I'll sell my data and bill <laughs> make use of it somehow i don't know um we'll see. but i think that i think a lot of companies would like to do that we'll see who actually is able to do it yeah true true Faisal, thank you so much for being on the show but my marketing team tells me i need to keep it within 12 to 30 minutes so yeah you. for sure thanks for having me Take care of yourself and stay safe Good one.